Last video, we built this 8-iron out of pennies, and based on the metrics from the launch monitor and our course test, it actually performed really well. In this video, we're trying aluminum, and specifically aluminum foil. This probably isn't a good idea, and I don't think there's ever been a muscle back or blade style iron made from aluminum, but we're gonna do it anyways. Maybe it will surprise us. We're starting by making a wax replica of a Mizuno MP68 8 iron so that once it's cast in aluminum, we can compare it directly against the real MP68. The wax gets molded in investment mix, baked out so the wax melts away, and then we'll pour aluminum into that void to make a one-to-one -one copy. Ultimately, we want to 3D model and cast our own original iron designs, but before we get to that point, we need to test different metals head-to-head -to, -head to see what metal or metal alloy makes the best golf iron for us. And aluminum's easy to source, so it's next on the list. This casting came out pretty decent, but it had some flaws on the face, so we gave it another shot. This one still has some slight defects, but it's close enough to where we can machine those defects away. Because aluminum is relatively soft, it machines easily, which is great. The trade-off is that its softness makes durability a huge concern. It could dent or deform quickly once we start hitting balls with it. Another consideration with aluminum is that it's a very light metal in weight, especially compared to stainless steel. All right, Mizuno 8-iron, 276 grams. Our aluminum replica 8-iron is 71 grams. Almost four times as light. This should be interesting. Disaster. We were uh, trying to get this thing dry fitted onto a shaft and uh, pulling it off broke the hosel completely. Yeah, that's uh, not good. Mm. Instead of trying to recast another one, just like last video, we decided to take this thing over to our welding buddy who's extremely good at what he does and see if he can help fix this thing. Buy a golf club, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, he was able to rescue us again and got an aluminum sleeve welded onto the hosel, which we then reshaped slightly, still leaving it as big as we could get away with in hopes that it'll provide the strength that we need. Got it polished up again, sandblasted the face, and got it glued onto a S300 shaft, which is the same shaft the Mizuno 8 iron has, and we were ready to test it at the range. After much trial and tribulation, we have an aluminum 8 iron, and uh, we're gonna put it to the test here on the range against the Mizuno 8 iron, and uh, I don't, we'll see if this even lasts a range session, but uh, yeah, let's give it a shot. All right, 10 shots with the aluminum. No chicken swing, you gotta go no, full normal swing. I'm just hoping to make contact. Dude. <laughs> Come on. Taking it back is ridiculous. I, I know you spent the last month building this, but. All right, all right. We gotta test it. Gotta give the people what they want. <laughs> <laughs> that concludes our that concludes our testing of the aluminum eight iron. It shattered in two places, which uh, can't really say was unexpected. It could be due to the heating from the welding. I don't know, but we've got some work to do. Here's the updated design, which really just has mass added to it everywhere, but the face and sole. It's not perfect right now, but we can smooth it out more after it's cast. It should be significantly stronger. We have our finished aluminum foil golf club version two. It's lost a bit of its uh, muscle back features. It's maybe more of like a hybrid iron at this point. We're not that confident this thing's not gonna break again. So we're gonna tee it up 
out behind our shop here off the dirt and see if it will last a shot. And if it does, we'll take it to the range and we'll set up the launch monitor behind it and see if we can get some metrics on it. First things first, we just gotta make sure it can last a golf shot. We set up the wrap soda behind us just in case this is the only shot that we're able to hit with it. We will at least get some data on it. It's less than half of the Mizuno and this thing is ridiculous to swing it. It's like swinging just a shaft. What are your odds? What are the odds that this thing doesn't break? 50-50. Yeah, I think that's appropriate. There is some pitting yeah, in the that. casting and uh, that uh, affects the strength of the, of the metal itself. So it's potential that it lost a bunch of strength, yeah. but it could be solid in there. All right, dude. Okay. It's intact. Well, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll we got our, on the face there. Yep. But it is not broken. Not broken. It wasn't the prettiest shot. Little first swing jitters. To time something this light is gonna be really hard. Oh. Okay. That was that was actually that was pretty decent. Face, okay. Face is fine. I think I think we've seen enough. Hazel's fine. 150 carry, 92.4 club speed, 4,500 spin. That's a little bit low yeah. on the spin, but it didn't break. Uh, I think we should go to the range. Went out to the range and we started off with the Mizuno 8 iron just to get warmed up and get some metrics on that before switching over to the aluminum. Time to see what kind of numbers it's got. We got 146 carry, 88.5 club speed, 19.2 launch angle. Those are all pretty good. Packard was carrying the aluminum foil eight iron around 125 yards with an 88 swing speed, which is pretty fast, but obviously super light club head, so it makes sense. We'll dive more into the numbers and the comparison with the Mizuno in a minute, but so far it's not looking very promising. Yeah, you do. It's pretty light. Oh. Man, that was, I can't even like take it back straight. It's so hard to like take it back without like. Oh man, I'm gonna break this thing. Man, how were you doing that? Man, what? <laughs> Dude. I'm gonna keep doing this until either the club breaks or I hit one decent. Let's start out with like a chip. It <laughs> still came out like a dud. All right. Okay. What do you think about that? I, I think it's the most impressive thing you've ever done. <laughs> the fact that you were able to hit this like somewhat consistently. Let me go see if we can find someone here that can actually hit this thing halfway decent. <laughs> yeah, that's in this file. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, with that, with that club. Patcher. So what's your hand? Yeah. Probably around 12. Twice as light. Even feel like there's a head on there. Yes, yeah, it's yeah. You know, just swinging a shaft. Yeah. Oh my god. I would take that. Oh. Yeah, that was, that was the best one yet. But. Dang. <laughs> Dude, that was money. We'll sell it to you. <laughs> like honestly. Can almost even feel like there's not a club head on. Yeah, it feels like just, a, just shaft. a shaft. Yeah. yeah. You would not elect to play this golf club? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> what's your name? Jackie. Jackie. Oh, what's your handicap? Like plus five. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Please? You you are by far the, the best golfer to ever touch that club. Really light. Yeah. Let's see how this goes. Yeah. <laughs> Really light. That's it. It's like I don't know how you hit it. That was great. I want you guys to hit it because I want you to feel how like there's no. Okay, last one. Last one. Last one. Yeah. Last one. This is it. If you break it, it's fine. Figure out a way to get it airborne. Okay, you're done. Yeah. Trippy. 
Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Real yeah. club. Well, th Real thank club. you. Thank yeah, you for sure. thank you for trying it. <laughs> no Any takers? You may no. Want? No. No. Okay. Okay. It turns out she's actually a professional golfer, and I think her coaches or whoever that was with her might have been getting a little concerned that our aluminum eight iron was going to screw up her swing, which I think is a totally fair concern. It's probably a good call, but it did make me feel a little bit a little bit better about my performance with the club, and uh, Patrick was absolutely ripping it. So after sleeping on it and hyper analyzing my swing, I felt like I had potentially figured it out. So we hit the range again to try and get some legit data on it. Oh boy, it's pretty pointless for, for me to give it, supply any data for this <laughs> test. If I can't even get this thing off the ground. Yeah. My data is pretty worthless, so I handed it off to Packard since he's actually able to hit the thing. Decent contact. That's all we want. Oh, that's literally a, sh that's a shank. Good thing we built it. Super durable. <laughs> Once he got that shank out of his system, here's his numbers with the aluminum foil iron in comparison with the Mizuno MP68. This is over 50 shots of data, so a pretty decent sample size. One thing I'll point out here is that the launch angles on both were pretty similar, but obviously the apex oh, yeah. is much higher on the That's Mizuno. Cool. It's uh, overall, it's just not very spectacular. Before we give up on this thing, we wanted to see how much better the metrics would be if we increase the weight and match it to the MP68. And I mainly just wanted to see if I'd actually be able to hit it. This thing looks absurd now, but it weighs the same as MP68. Certainly, I've got to be able to hit it better. This thing was like a trick club before. Yeah. It was like a magic trick if you were able to hit it. Right. And now it's just like a bad golf club. <laughs> I feel like this tape like takes the sweet spot away. I, I never had a sweet spot on it. Yeah. Anyways. Well, that's but. true. We did have to add a lot of lead strips to the club head to match the weight. So the positioning of those, not that we really had many options, is Good definitely enough. gonna have some effect on the metrics. But overall, you can see it's performing much better now. It's still not even close to the Mizuno, but it sort of works as a golf club. Since we found out the club is somewhat usable with the lead tape on it, we took it out to the par three course and removed the lead tape so we could subject ourselves to the true monstrosity that we had created. And all things considered, we honestly hit some pretty decent shots with it out there. Mixed in a few bad ones, of course, but the main thing with this club is that if you swing it enough, just attempting to get good contact with it, you'll find your swing totally changing all in an attempt to get better contact. My swing with the aluminum club is quite a bit different than with a Mizuno. It's like a very unconfident, short, punchy swing. Packard goes for more of a knockdown, shortened style approach, but really the hardest part is once you've swung this thing for a while, going back to a normal golf iron feels like you're swinging a sledgehammer. So this is not, it's not a good thing that we've created here. I think we can safely cross aluminum off the list of potential metals. Without the lead tape, this club is, uh, to me, unusable. I think I got it up in the air like twice. Yeah. without the tape with the tape it i can hit it but it's just like a bad it's like i said it's a bad golf club this is a bad golf club did we learn anything from making this i mean aluminum's not easy to hit or cast or anything do you think you could break 90 if uh, you had a full set of these oh yeah <laughs> <Here's your challenge. laughs>